With over 12,000 cards available for players to choose from, the majority of which saw their initial debut in the anime, you might be inclined to believe that every card from the anime has received a physical print. But the truth is, there are still hundreds of cards from the anime that have never transitioned to the TCG or the OCG. It's almost as though they're being kept hidden. Are these cards simply too powerful to introduce to today's metagame? Today, we're uncovering the secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Of every monster type in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, insects are by far my least favorite. And I don't say that from a place of genuine hatred, because I've tried playing Battle Wasp, Digital Bug, Insectors, and the like, but I've yet to find an insect-focused deck that I've enjoyed playing. It just ain't hitting right. But perhaps the anime will change all of that for me. Or will it make me dislike the monster type even more? On this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! we'll be looking at 10 insect type monsters spanning from dual monsters to 5Ds. This was originally going to be an episode dedicated to Weevil Underwood, but truth be told, he actually didn't have that many anime exclusive cards, so we're forced to branch out. Starting with a card that I completely forgot about in the Duelist Kingdom episode played by Weevil in episode 5 of season 1. Parasite Worm isn't actually a monster, but it fits the theme of the video, so can Consider this a bonus number 11. A normal trap card with the following effect, activate only when your opponent summons a monster, destroy it, and inflict damage to your opponent equal to its attack. For the Duel Monsters era, that's pretty great actually. I could easily see this card being a preferred staple over something like Bottomless Trap Hole. Moving into Battle City, we've got a painfully boring pest, played by Weevil in his duel against Joey in episode 15 of season 2. A level 4 Earth Insect Normal Monster with 500 attack, and 1200 defense. It's the definition of a throwaway normal monster if I've ever seen one, as it left the field as quickly as it arrived, being immediately sacrificed for the effect of Weevil's Ant Reproduction spell card, allowing him to summon 10 tokens. Buddy was playing 3D chess with those numbers. In an effort to make the Season 4 Waking the Dragons episode under an hour, let's look at Weevil's monsters from that arc. Starting with Armored Centipede, appearing in Episode 18 a level 5 earth insect monster with 1600 attack and defense with the following effect. If this card destroys an insect type monster by battle, it gains 500 attack. It could be worse, but it could certainly be a lot better. Armored Centipede by all accounts fits the playstyle of Weevil's deck, infecting his opponent's monsters and turning them into insect types. But I've never been a huge fan of the type hunter monsters whose only redeeming quality is a stat boost. And on top of a one tribute monster, I'm gonna have to double it and give it to the next person. The next two cards are one of the scarce examples of card synergy from the original anime, making their first appearances in episodes 16 and 18 respectively. Parasite Caterpillar, a level 3 Weevil wind insect monster with 800 attack and defense and the following effect. If this card is selected as an attack target, equip this card as an equip card to the attacking monster after damage calculation. The equipped monster is treated as insect type and it cannot be tributed or selected as an attack target. If the equipped monster is the only monster your opponent controls, monsters you control can attack your opponent directly. During your opponent's third standby phase after this card was equipped to that monster, destroy the equipped monster and special summon one poison butterfly from your deck to your opponent's side of the field. In tandem with Weevil's Mimesis Trap card, another anime exclusive, which redirected the attack of Yugi's obnoxious Celtic Guard to proc the effect of Parasite Caterpillar, this fairly annoying lockdown was able to be set up with relative ease. Of course, we're also talking about an anime plotline. Poison Butterfly, the monster special summoned by Parasite Caterpillar is a level 7 wind insect monster with 2700 attack and 1800 defense with the following effect. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card can only be special summoned by the effect of Parasite Caterpillar. This card's controller takes 500 damage during each of their end phases. This card's controller takes 500 damage during each of their end phases. So, there's a glaring issue with this card. If you draw it, it's a dead card, being that it can only be special summoned from the deck by the effect of Parasite Caterpillar. And the effect is a far worse version of Lava Golem. If these two cards did exist, it's very much a 3-in-1 combination for your deck like Cyframe Gear Gamma and Driver. Fun fact, this is also the monster that Yugi attempted a forbidden fusion dance with the Eye of Tamias, 
and I do still wonder what might have become of a dragon butterfly. And finally, tying his deck together is Pheromone Wasp, a level 3 wind insect monster with 800 attack and defense. What the bug doing? If this card inflicts battle damage to your opponent by a direct attack, you can special summon one level 4 or lower insect type monster from your deck at the end of the battle phase. Honestly, I'm split on this one. On one hand, it's an overall better battle tutor, being that it doesn't need to be destroyed to bring out another low level insect. But on the other hand, the need to perform a successful direct attack with a level 3 monster with less than 1000 attack means you either have several other cards set up allowing you to do this, or you're already in a winning state against your opponent's empty board, and this is a win more card. Yes, this card was paired with the effect of Parasite Caterpillar, which allowed for seamless poking by Pheromone Wasp, but I have trust issues and can't put all of my faith in that. I could take it or leave it. Moving away from Weevil, if you told me the next card was played by Merrick, I'd honestly have my doubts. Vampiric Leech, appearing in episode 41 of season 3, is a level 4 earth insect monster with 500 attack and 1200 defense, with a bit of a confusing effect. During the turn this card attacked your opponent, you can discard one card to the graveyard to change this card to defense position during the end phase. Also, this card can attack from the first turn. Unless you're playing a bad version of Infernity, I'm not sure why you'd activate the first effect. The second effect is what makes my brain hurt, but I believe that if you play this card going first, you can technically attack with it? In a physical print, I imagine this effect would be reworded into a burn on summon. Either way, I don't know what Merrick was thinking with this one because this ain't it. Now we're getting into uncharted territory because we're stepping into Season 2 of Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. Magical Longicorn, played by Missy in Episode 4, is a level 4 Earth Insect Monster with 600 attack and 1600 defense, with a bafflingly stupid effect. While this card is in face-up attack position, negate the activation of your spell cards. This is exactly one of those cards that is best when given to your opponent because you have absolutely no use for it, and unsurprisingly, that's exactly what Missy did. If I could veto one card from ever being brought to the physical card game, this would be a strong candidate. Our next monster seen in GX was summoned by another dual monster of all things. We won't get into the weeds of it because it's a mess, but the card is Sand Doodlebug, a level 4 earth insect monster with 1200 attack and 800 defense with the following effect. During each player's end phase, destroy one level 3 or lower monster on the field. This card can attack your opponent directly. While Wasteland is face up on the field, you can negate one attack from an opponent's monster. All things considered, these effects are completely fine. I can't really say anything bad about them, but I do want to point out the absurdity of a single episode GX monster having an effect that is only live while you control a field spell from Legend of Blue Eyes. Also, the fact that the monster is an insect and that specific field spell, Wasteland, is designed specifically for zombies, dinosaurs, and rock monsters. GX is a fever dream. But let's wake up. Actually, let's rev it up. That's right, we're riding right into Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds with our final two cards. Bewitching Butterfly, a level 2 dark insect monster with 800 attack and 1800 defense and the following effect. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. If your opponent controls a monster that has higher attack than this card, destroy this card. Yeah, they had us the first half, I'm not gonna lie. And our final card for this week comes from a full-on mechanic that is still exclusive to the anime. Dark Synchros, which will be getting their own dedicated episode, so stay tuned for that. Dark Tuner Spider Cocoon, making its first appearance in Roman Godwin's deck in episode 45 of season 1, is a level 5 Dark Insect Dark Tuner monster with zero attack and defense, and a banger of an effect. If your opponent controls a monster and you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. We're making it out the extra deck with this one. With the non-existence of Dark Synchros in the physical game, this card would still be fantastic as a regular tuner with a Cyber Dragon effect, and if anything were to convince me to run an insect deck, this is the ticket. But that's going to wrap up this week's episode of The Secrets of Yu-Gi-Oh! Let me know your thoughts. Are there cards that you want to see covered in this series? Drop a comment down below. And if you like the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV, signing off.